from the art fair. So we have to, I have the honor to be with two artists that they're part of Diverse Art LA in the art fair. I just want to explain a little bit before I introduce them what is Diverse Art LA. This year, LA Art Show is celebrating the 25th anniversary. Uh, I have the honor and pleasure to be the curator of Diverse Art LA for the fourth year. And Diverse Art LA is a space, it's a platform that the art fair supports in order to have museums and institutions. It's a platform uh, where we create dialogue, a conversation between the institutions and the, and the museums. Of course, we have uh, three parts, and we have museums, non-profits, art collections, and always, uh, from the past third, like three editions, I invite one or two performers, artists from different parts of the world. In this case, one of the organizations, Los Angeles Art Association, sent several, uh, probably around between 75 and 100 proposals from different artists, Los Angeles artists, and I have the, it was, for me it was amazed because I was trying to create this overall conceptual um, idea or concept uh, based in diverse satellite, based in diversity and what diversity means. In a, of course, in a crucial moment, we are in an election year, 2020. There's a lot of things happening. And I was trying to see what it means, what it is diversity for everybody and for each institution, how much of diversity they really apply within the institutions. So I was asking to each of the museums to present, or the, the organizations in this case, to present an artist or a project based on inclusion, LGBTQ inclusion in the museums, diversity inclusion in the institutions. And so between the almost 100 projects from uh, Los Angeles Art Association, I found Miss Art World. And uh, her project was so, <laughs> her project was so unique and so powerful and so much in me, I really think so for a moment. And, and I think it is so connected with Los Angeles, with the city of Los Angeles. Uh, that I was like, this is the only project that we can have. So I called Peter, the director, and said, this is the only project that I want for representing LAR Association in Diverse Anthony. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for all the hard work that you have done, because I know that she's been doing a lot of research, a lot of work, very hard work, behind the scenes and previous work, uh, creating, and creating an open call and, and interviewing everybody. So I just uh, am impressed with you for this part and you are a big contribution to the yourself today. And now I'm going to introduce Adriana Ramirez. Adriana Ramirez is from Colombia and I have the honor to work with her in several locations in Chile, Santiago de Chile for the Telefonica Foundation with a big exhibition there and this last year I took her in a small curatorial, well kind of large, curatorial project for the Denver Vallenia in Colorado. So she was representing Colombia in Denver Vallenia and now when I, I really invite her to be part of Diverse Art LA with her platform, she said yes and I was super excited to have her from Bogota, from Colombia, with all the language and very interesting way that she worked with conceptual art in uh, Diverse Art LA. So thank you again for being here. Thank you, it's my pleasure and thank you, you for coming today right now. And uh, well, I think the conversation, we're going to start with Adriana because of the images that we have here. And I just want a little bit of an explanation of how you as a conceptual artist, as a contemporary artist in Colombia, in Bogota, do you work with this platform that you are creating? Uh, and how do you work with public spaces? Because she worked a lot with engaging the public spaces and the community, which I think is really important uh, for all of us. 
So, can you explain a little bit more about your work? Thank you, Pratio. Well, when I present myself, I used to say that I really like to make things, but I really love to make things happen. That means that I, I really like to open these kind of platforms where people can stop being used as a spectator. I would like to invite you to be my co-author and the main characters of my work. So I'm going to this is the so this is a project that maybe you have seen outside and it has been developed by five years and where I removed myself to leave empty space to you be the protagonist. Uh, there is a really beautiful concept that is from Japan that is called Ma. Ma is the space between the things but it's not an empty space. It's the, like the bridge. It's quite beautiful because the same word uh, names the both, the empty space and the possibility between all them. So what I do is to remove information, remove different kind of uh, knowledge, and to remove myself to leave empty space for you. So this kind of platforms works um, just inviting you to stand on them, all these kind, all these platforms, where you are going to find different kind of statements. These statements are declarations. That means they speaks about the future. I really love the future because, um, as she says, I'm from Colombia and we are passing this through kind process of peace. And uh, so when I started to work, I decided to invite people and convince people to focus on the future because we have right now a really good opportunity to rebuild and redesign our future as a country. So, but it, it could work for everyone, for everybody. Because what my intention here is not to think about future as something that, our, that comes automatically. It's maybe, uh, uh, it's not for me, for sure, it's something that we can scoop with all the risks that it comes with the sculpture. Because it's, it's like a, it's beautiful. So, um, if you have, haven't been there, Please, I invite you to be to the neighbors at the neighbors and check it. There is a new word that is Advent Brace. Advent Brace is my gift for you, and it means to conceive the future as something that you can sculpt and embrace with love, with responsibility. And my challenge here is uh, just look at it past, and we have this uh, possibilities look to the future. Thank you so much. Do you have more um, images that you want to share with us? Yes, yes. Uh, this and, is in Cuba. Yes, like from the Cuba Biennial. So Ariana has been participating in very in many biennials all over the world with different projects. All the projects are interactive and they're uh, open to everybody to participate. And I think in this case to have um, Los Angeles as a city that we have so much, so many people speaking Spanish and having her with this dialogue, this conversation between the platforms in Spanish and in English, it was very interesting to invite people to participate. Uh, and actually, they're kind of very thoughtful and can change your mood when you step into a, a, a certain platform. Well, this is another platform. I mean, a platform is a space with an excuse or a reason that I give to you and with the uh, with certain circumstances, uh, and I'm waiting something to emerge. I don't know, but I hope because I really uh, trust on the wisdom of my public. So this is uh, this is my national anthem in Colombia, and it, it has to it has to be seen two two twice by twice by day, and it's for love. And it says something with river of blood and the people crying because they are celebrating the independent independent world. So what I invite is people to change it. So it says you, I allow you to change all that you want 
the point is that it needs, it needs to have reason. So at the end of the day, it's possible to sing another uh, thing. It's, it's really good because people have, really need to change the way we define our nation and our society with one of the um, national symbols. Great, thank you. Well, and thank you so much. Can we? Do you have some more images, or can we change to the to the next? Yeah, yeah. Well, but maybe just to keep keep going. Can we change to the next PDF so we can talk a little bit with Miss Harbour? And I want you to just share with with us your journey as a performer at this. And, uh, and probably, you know, the, we're going to talk later, but it's just about the shift, you know, of the last five, six years, how as a female artist, uh, doing performances, public performances, what shift, what changed in you and the way that you see or you perceive um, the public and yourself as a performer. I think uh, for me, so I went into grad school as a painter and came out as a performance artist and I think one of the things that really challenged me in grad school was you're trying to say something but you're not saying it directly to people. Um, you're not, it's not as uh, clear in a painting as it can be in performance art. And so that's when I started doing performance work. Um, and started realizing that for me, with performance art, it was a way for me to directly engage with people. Even though most of my performance work, um, so like this one, it's called the Icarus Complex, and um, I had 800 medals installed on the gallery walls, and a the son would come in and put a medal on me, and. He continued to put medals on me until I couldn't stand anymore. So this piece didn't directly engage with the audience, but I think just performing it and having it live and in person and having people engage with the action of it uh, was really important for me as a performance artist to get that message across. Um, all of my work deals with kind of my own experiences. Um, I grew up doing beauty pageants um, and within my art practice, I wanted to talk about feminist issues and was told that I couldn't do both. I couldn't be a feminine uh, person and I couldn't be a feminist at the same time. And so most of my performance pieces are matching both of those together to directly talk to the people that are watching the performance and hopefully they walk away with thinking, oh, you can do both and uh, there's the social realism behind that where it's speaking more to the truth of our society. Obviously, this is probably a question um, that I have for both of you. Do you really feel that right now with all the movements, do you have the freedom and the space to say what do you really want to say with your work? Um, for me, I wish I had more of the space, and, and I know that you do um, performance in public, um, and I've been hesitant to do that because I think that is powerful, where you have, you go and directly face people. Uh, most of my performances have been in galleries, so I recognize that the people that I'm performing for are art people, um, and so one of the things that I really want to try and do is go into public spaces and perform for people that aren't within the art world. Eliana? Oh, well, this, um, how can I explain this? Uh, um, it's, it's in Colombia, it's, what kind, it's new, but if you go find, people really want to participate. It's for sure that if you open a space or you are presenting yourself in a place, people really want to have a direct contact, contact with art, be part of it. So it's sometimes it's easier because sometimes I don't ask any permits, but sometimes I have to, I have to hire people like paramedics or something like that. But sometimes, for example, in Cuba, I just 
take all my things outside and when the first policeman came I explained blah blah blah, blah. when the second policeman arrived I explained but when the third policeman arrived I said okay it's time for me to have lunch <laughs> it's, uh, it's time for me to go so I collect all day and I run away but it's it's really nice because it, it's possible it's like a people really want to have something and if but I agree with you first you have to deduce and then you have to question it's not in the other way I really it's not nice for the younger people because at the beginning I really want to question people and say no 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 no, no. But if we do it the other way, we could first seduce the eyes, seduce the body, seduce the brain, and then questions is going to be more effective than nothing. Definitely. <laughs> well, because one of the issues that I face, uh, and I think it's, it's something interesting that I want to have in the conversation, is that even as a curator myself, working with artists, that they barely tap topics in the social and political issues, in the public spaces, with performances, is, is super um, complicated. And, and, and I have many examples of um, the issue that we had even with Antoine, which it was not a performance in Chile, and it was just an object, and an interactive object. And we were showing um, a specific body of work that we showed here in LA a few years ago, and we received a call previous to the opening day from the government in Venezuela saying that we have to put one of the pieces with Maduro's face, the president, Maduro's, you know, down because they were closing the exhibition, they were closing the space. So we had to, and we had the directors of the space calling me immediately, you cannot say this to press, you cannot call the press, but you have to say that you, for some reason, you just put down the work, and there's no, um, so you have to face all these kind of risky situations, and the same thing happened in the biennial then, so in many other cases. When I start to work with the national anthem, my husband uh, said to me, this is against the law, you know that? And I say, okay, but this is the work of the artist. We have, to, we have the power to push the limits and invite you as a public to think, okay, it is possible or not. So that is the reason because we do what we do. We push the limits and we, that's the, and I said, okay, and he said, you can go to the jail because uh, you can't mm, destroy or whatever the national signals. Uh, and I said, okay, maybe it's not, but then I'm going to be famous. Let's do it, because we have to do it, it's my feeling. And it has been working really good. Well, and I think the, the, the power of the art is that you really have that freedom. At a certain point, but, uh, you know, the, the, the community can be really against certain things that are happening in a country, in a city, but they don't have the space and the power sometimes to really go and speak up in a large form. So the artists are the ones that can do that. And they have the space, and many times they have the space and the access to, and the possibility to do that. Yeah. No, I agree. I think um, it's almost an excuse to do whatever you want to do because you're the artist and you're driven by other purposes. So you're driven by by this love for gender equality and um, uh, diversity. And so you as the artist have this empowering sense of, if it's against the law, but I have to do it. I'm the artist, this is my responsibility to push social change. Yeah, and I think it's the permission. Because basically, it's like, like you said, it's like this, you are an artist. You can do that. If uh, my name, next door name, is coming up, people will question that. So there is a certain permission uh, that artists have, and they work with that passion and that permission. Like, so I think I want to ask you, what is the probably the stream, like the extreme performance or work that you have done in your career? 
Um, I would actually say this one. Um, so this one, uh, I had gotten so many metals on me um, to the point where I couldn't stand anymore, and it started to choke. Um, choked me, and so eventually I, I almost puked all over the gallery floor, um, and then started taking all the medals off. But this one probably pushed myself, my physical self, to the extreme, and the whole point was to show this obsessiveness that we have with success. So we're always pushing ourselves, we're always trying, and especially women, I think we're obsessed sometimes with uh, being the most beautiful, being the most put together, and it can um, be de de detrimental to ourselves and our physical health because we're so obsessed with this idea of being beautiful and successful. Uh, so this one was probably the most difficult one for me to do as far as my physical body. Adriana? Oh, well, I uh, have a lot of histories, but this is really nice. So uh, one of the platforms that I open is one that is called the next get together and I invite people, 20 people, to pick only one menu that has to satisfy everyone. So for example you don't like wine, you don't like you don't drink milk. And this it's quite beautiful because at the beginning there are always no's but at the end something beautiful um, just appears. So so and I have different kind of topics. So I was doing this inside in a post conflict uh, exhibitions and I invite people to, to come to speak about their para paradigms and because e everyone we are ex, ex something so when they um, it was quite crazy because I used to as I told you that this idea of man empty space I used to leave a shell empty for the people who is arriving because it's it's lovely so we are, we were waiting for you and one day, I invite people that, I used to invite people that were working at the guerrilla, and the paramilitaries, but now they are doing other kind of things, studying, they have their own companies. But this time, uh, there were two people, and this man was telling that he was uh, a leader at the guerrilla. And the girl who was next, next to him said, okay, I'm going to tell my history, I was an ex Well, she was uh, she was like, taken by the gorilla, yeah. and she didn't. She said, "I don't don't used to tell this history, but this is the space." So when I was when I came back from London, I went to the, my town, my father's town, and it's in the middle of the forest, and I started to teach English to the kids. So the gorilla think that I was a spy. So they took me for a month until they review my history and they let me go. But this man who was here started to cry because he started to ask different kind of questions until he said something. But it was crazy because I, ha I was in another part of the table and other man just kicked me and he said, look what is going to happen. And I said, why are you kicking me? Look, look. And he said, um, well, and he started to ask the, the year, the place, everything, and he said, okay, um, I have to tell you that I, I am now a very Christmas man. Yeah. yeah, Christian. Christian man. And I asked 15 days ago for, to have, for having the opportunity to ask forgiveness to the people that I kidnapped. And I am the one that I kidnapped you, I did, I did the order to, I, I recognize you were the history. You were no, the, the girl who was sitting was next, next to you. And I, I was the, the boss of the group that kidnapped you. So I need you to ask you for forgiving, for forgiving please. And he started to cry, and this girl was just spread out his hat like this, and in front of the table was a girl like, like this. <laughs> and so after this I said, okay, this is so quite beautiful, but we need to pick one, our menu. So everybody just disappeared and called somebody, and I called my husband, and what he 
he asked me, what did you do? So I just went to the stove because we were preparing things and I took with me all the knives. I don't know what to do, so I, I went to the, to, the, to the place where we have everything and I took with me all the knives. And I said, okay, I, I have all that is dangerous with me. And now we have to wait. And but it was a beautiful history because they were talking about like two hours. Well, I think it's, you know, that's one of the, the things with art, is with contemporary art and the performers, that they really couldn't risk themselves in many of the cases. And I, and I work especially with some of the artists that really uh, work with their bodies, and they go to places that, you know, very, like, risking themselves. Like, you say that you were working just in galleries, and I'm curious to see what is your idea of working in different places in the future. Because in the moment that you break that line to working just inside of a safe space, which is the gallery. The gallery is a safe space, which basically the, 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 the people that go to visit the gallery, they know the rules. They know what they're going to find there almost. So the moment that you break out those walls, uh, those things, and you really move out to the public space, or you're working with the general public that you don't know, who is going to be responding to your process, to your creative process. And to, so that's where the risk really began, in, especially in the contemporary art scene, and in, in, especially in the, in the social and political issues that the artists are involved today. Uh, when the governments get involved, and, and different laws, or breaking the law, like we were talking with the art meeting earlier today, just breaking the law in writing in a communist country, we were talking about Cuba in a communist country, writing about art or what's going on at the moment. So artists would go behind that, that those those you know walls, those limits. So any other experience that you want to share with us? Maybe you? What, how do you feel about diverse art today and being performing with so many uh, different artists and, and sharing the space with artists and people from Los Angeles here at the fair? I think it was amazing. Um, I really appreciate the LA Art Show for having this space away from kind of the commercial areas and really dedicating um, the diversity programming to say something more impactful um, and then having to be able to meet artists from all over the country. Um, obviously I'm from America and sometimes I think as an American we take for granted the freedoms that we have um, where I, I can write something and it won't be illegal but in Cuba if I was an artist they can. you can't and um, so I think that has been really insightful learning about what other performance artists are doing and how they're pushing their limits even past what I would have even thought of and so I'm excited to be able to go on and continue doing performance art with having met so many people that do it in a different way and challenging myself to really live up to kind of what they're doing in their countries. Well, I think it, you know, very grateful again because the, every every each of you are bringing such a powerful message to the general community, and I think in the university, like besides a uh, curatorial area and an area for institutions, I think it's an area for education and an area that, that you can really talk and speak about freedom of speech, and, and we have like some of the archives and things in the in the space within the fair that they're so rare that you can find in an art fair. Which I'm so grateful that we have that opportunity. Adriana, do you want to say something? Thank you. Um, it's uh, just a detail, but when I uh, was preparing uh, my presentation here, I made new cards, um, personal cards, and he says, uh, I'm going to change my my car, my history, my the roles, my gender, and and so I was started to public this card, and I uh, I received a call from a friend that is living in Houston, and he really wanted to ask 
why I do write this and the other change of genre so directly. And I say, why not? But I, I didn't, I, I, I haven't, why? It's quite normal. And he said to me, it's not normal, Maria, you know me. And it's what you were talking about, changing the gender. You know, we are having these different topics that they're very uh, relatively new in this society or open to the light or the, to the conversation for everybody. So having uh, the artists working really open about that, sometimes a certain area or certain part of the society, it can be touched, it can be, you know, uh, extreme, even that it's not, but it, it, but it can be, but I think it's, it's, it's very important to educate the people, just to have these conversations more freely and more open conversations and create an understanding between everybody in terms of this topic. That they're, yes, they're on the TV. Yes, well, in the art world, it's actually part of the conversation and creating uh, an understanding. I think it, it, it's a way to create peace. In order to create peace between nations and between cultures, we need to have an understanding of each other. An understanding and, and actually embracing that diversity, embracing the differences and, and understanding the other person even if we have an accent, a heavy accent, we have everybody does. When we go to another country, you know, I have an accent, a heavy accent, even though I've been living here for 20 years, uh, but I'm coming from Argentina. But of course, when people from here, they go into another country, they have an accent as well. Or, you know, if you have the, 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 a French person going to Germany, they will have a heavy accent, even if they try to speak the language. So sometimes, even with the language, talking again about the language that is your topic in the adult, is the, 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 the differences in accents and the way that you approach culturally the, the life, it's very important to create that understanding, to, to feel that bridge, really. Yeah. So do you want to show some more images of your work? You can click, you know, we get Catherine, you can click and probably just move the, the mm -hmm. green. Yes, I think you have some. Oh, oh. Okay, um, I want to talk a little bit about this. Sure, so this one um, is, uh, I think it's uh, called Drugs, or I forgot what I titled it. But um, basically it was me, again, talking about kind of the beauty industry and how you get obsessive with it. So the reason that I grew up doing beauty pageants is because I chose to do beauty pageants. I told my mom that I wanted to do a pageant and she said, oh, hell no. Um, she's more of a tomboy and I came out just covered in glitter and wanting to do very girly things and she kind of didn't know what to do with me half the time. Um, so I chose to do pageants because I was I was attracted to the the beauty side of things. But then, uh, having competed for so long, I also experienced all the negativity that went into body image and how we look at ourselves and how we look at others. So this piece um, stereotypes. Yes. Um, this piece I melted um, lipstick onto a spoon, uh, like a drug, and um, injected it um, from a so syringe into the beauty mask face. Um, and then the lipstick, when it was injected, would squirt into the face. And then at the end of the performance, I put the face on and walked out. Um, and so this is really talking about beauty as a drug in our society, especially living in Hollywood, in LA, where it's something that a lot of people are consumed with, with Instagram, with Facebook. Um, it's something that I know I've thought about a lot as a young woman growing up, and I have challenged myself to really take a step back and kind of be more accepting of myself, my body, and others. Um, this one, I went to Japan for my honeymoon, and I was really obsessed with going to a maid cafe, which if you don't know, um, you go in and they 
uh, address you as master and or princess if you're a female, but most of it is a single male that goes in to it. And you can pay extra for them to pay game to put the maids to play games with you and there's all these kind of cute little treats and, and things like that. Um, and so I wanted to take that experience that I had in a completely different culture and bring it into um, our culture and see how people would interact. And I wanted to play with gender within this performance because when I went to a maid cafe, it was all females. And so for this performance, I had females and males both dressed in maid outfits um, with masks on and they would interact with people and ask them, oh, would you like to play a game? Would you like a, a treat? And just to see how people kind of interacted with them, how they were very uncomfortable with being addressed as master, um, was an experiment on how people can interact with different genders, but taking it from a different culture and, and putting it into ours. Um, was very interesting and I think insightful with how uncomfortable we are with with bodies and with other people's bodies especially when it's something that we're not um, expecting so the, the middle the middle maid is my older brother and uh, he was very into this performance and just had a great time interacting with other men and calling them master, and um, just seeing that kind of interaction was, was interesting and a great thing for me to take back into my other pieces. And I think this is the last one that I included. Um, I've moved away from doing um, just focusing on the beauty pageant experience um, and more talking about issues that we as women have. Um, so this one, I wanted to talk about um, feeling like my voice wasn't as loud as a male voice in our society. Um, a long time ago in the Victorian era, when women couldn't speak, they had fans that they could communicate with. It was a secret language of fans. And so I got a giant fan and I had Bluetooth um, speakers in my ears that would tell me what the motion was so you know put your fan on your right cheek that meant that you can come and talk to me or put your uh, fan open and close that means go away I'm angry at you and so people could pick up headphones and hear what the secret language was of the fans but if you didn't have the headphones on all you saw was this completely enclosed woman who couldn't speak and her voice was taken away and her only thing that she could communicate with was this giant fan and how frustrating that was. And so the audio would um, speed up and eventually the fan would break because I was just trying so hard to um, communicate with this fan with people that couldn't understand what I was saying. It's a super interesting. Yeah. I think it's, it's great. Do you want to say something else about your career or do we want to have some questions for, for the artists here? Anybody in the audience having questions? Because art requires participation, remember <laughs> that. <laughs> I think it's good. It's, it's almost like practicing a little performance here. So, um, doing your performances with all the different um, ethnicities and things that you did for this last performance with the runway, um, was there anything that stuck out to you with which cultures felt more kind of oppressed or didn't feel like they were uh, had their voice heard? And was there another group that felt on the opposite side that they felt they uh, didn't feel like they were diverse enough to be able to communicate because they felt like they were the minority? I, 
Yes, definitely. I think um, a lot of the the white people, the Caucasian people that um, I asked to do the project were very uncomfortable because they felt like they couldn't fit into the diversity box. And when I kind of challenged them and said, hey, we need, we need white people too. If we don't include everybody, that's not what diversity is. Um, I think in LA, which was the poll of people that I picked from was only in LA. And so I thought it was really interesting that we had such a um, such a strong Hispanic population. Um, they were really just so interesting to talk to and I really felt like they felt that they had a voice in LA, that LA really represented them. I think was um, surprising to me, I interviewed a, a young lady who went to UCLA, uh, African American woman, and she had told me that when she attended UCLA, she was it was like five percent acceptance for African American students, and so she really felt um, like she was, you know, one of very few African American people that were going to LA or UCLA, and I think that's something that our culture and our society needs to recognize is we don't have enough opportunities. 5% of African Americans going to UCLA is ridiculous. That's awful. I can't imagine what she went through sitting in the class where she was the only person from her um, race. I mean, that's got to be hard. Um, so I, I do think that um, interviewing the African American uh, people that performed in my performance was really powerful and insightful to understand what they go through. I will never know what it's like to be a black woman in America, but to, to interview with them and to hear what they struggle with, to hear that when they go into a store, um, they're followed, they're tracked, um, when they're walking down the street, they feel like they're in danger. That's, I think, is horrible. And I think it needs to be voiced in a performance so that other people like me and like um, other races can kind of understand what they're going through and uh, be a little bit more aware of their struggles and how we can help them. And I think it's perception also. It's super interesting what you were saying because you know, I'm an immigrant myself, and I'm coming from South America, but it was interesting how um, it's so uh, important how we raise the next generations and our kids, because one of the things that my child was born here, he's from Los Angeles, born here, he's American, and he was coming from the school and saying, well, mom, um, yes, I'm American, but you're not. You know, and uh, like you say, you were you were Latina. You know, I'm American, but you were Latina. You're still a Latina. And I was like, for the first time in my life, being that I faced that with my own child, saying, I'm American. Huh? You are the one, the strange one. But no, I'm part of this. I'm like, you are the one. Which was very interesting. How at you know, almost at 40, at 40 years old, you have to face that for the first time in your life, almost a mirror, and, and he was looking now and he's 16 years old. He tells me, which is super interesting, he said, Mom, you don't realize that, because yes, you are Latina, and this is so incredible. To me, it's painful, and that's why I work really much on diversity in, in my own curatorial statement, even as an artist and as a curator, because he, he's saying that all the time. You were white, you were Latina, but you were white color, so you have a different right anyway. So you don't see that. And that coming from a kid in school, saying that, and you, you know, and of course, raised by a Latina mother, you know? So it's super interesting how much we still have to change and embrace that and, uh, you know, and, and educate our kids because it's, it's super interesting what it is even underground in society is still there.
and, and that, that fear of speaking in Spanish, even saying, I don't want to speak Spanish with you, Mom, because, you know, I, I don't. I just want to speak English, which is interesting. And I think it, living in Los Angeles, and when I, all the opposite, when, I, when uh, Latin American artists, when they're coming here, they say that everybody speaks Spanish here. Which is it's interesting that because of the difference between them. Well, and my uh, little sister went to a dual immersion school by the, when she was in kindergarten, so she's completely fluent in Spanish and my family very much encourages her, like, oh, speak Spanish, like, we want you to engage and be able to communicate, and so it's so different that your son yes. doesn't want yes. to do that. That's the one that, that even he speaks, which is mm -hmm. interesting, and you see the two points, you know, inside the society as well. So it's, it has to be a bridge that is still is there, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So any other questions? Hi, good night. Um, I'm going to first, first a question then in Spanish and then in English for the same question. Um, escuchándolas, eh, empiezo a pensar que, la, y, y me corrigen, que esa es la pregunta, si eso no es, lo que motiva hacer los performances es que la gente tenga una experiencia de catarsis, eso es lo que motiva. Uh, listening to you too, I realize that maybe there is some motivation. Uh, is it, just please correct me if I'm wrong or not, or assert me if it's that one. Your motivation to do this performance is to get people to have a catharsis experience. I mean, a moment in which they get reflected and have a moment of learning as a catharsis experience. Oh well, in my case, maybe it's not a catharsis, uh, but one of my um, fundamentals in uh, working artists uh, to invite you to experience or to conceive life as a sculptural experience. That means that uh, if I have something here, you are looking one way and looking the other. And what I work in is to tell you that all we have versions. And if we share our version, maybe we can find the truth. And then, in order with this idea, what I do in my work is to invite people to experience themselves from another point of view. Of view. So, because uh, we, I, I have four um, words that I really like, that is position, posture, contingency, contingency, and potential. And if I change one of these two first position or postures in the life of others, what I am expecting is to have another point of view of life. That is not, it's not a catharsis, it's just change the place where you are to experience a concept, a question, an event. And it's quite beautiful to experience, that's what I think, to see, okay, I am looking at this, or maybe next time that I have to discuss something with my neighbor, neighbor I'm going to ask first what he saw. And that is my... Yeah. Well, thank you. That's another question. Oh, um, so you, you were saying in Colombia when you do your public kind of art shows that people wanted to participate, they wanted to be a part of the art. So I had a question, I was wondering if you thought that would be the same case if you did it in another culture, like if you did that in America, do you think people would be as willing to participate in that public art? And then as a second question to a star world, I wanted to know your opinion on that living in America, do you think people would be as willing to engage in public art as they are in a country like Colombia? Well, it's something quite different being here for me. And, and because usually in Latin America, people really want to get in easily. <laughs> but when I arrived here to LA, I was taking some pictures at Hermosa Beach, and everyone was asking me, and they really want to, to touch. But usually, you here are, more, are not only respectful, but you are not supposed to be on my work, for example. So I have to invite one by one and explain one by one. It's not, it's, it's a little bit uh, difficult uh, to invite 
people here in the USA, for me, it has been a little bit harder. Yes. But I, but I think it, it, it going toward that, I'm sorry that I interrupted, but my experience of being in both worlds, working really in Latin America, all over Europe, Asia, and here, is I think every culture has a different sense of space. When I talk about space, it's a private space. It's my personal space. So when you go to certain Asian countries, you don't have space. You actually, they can, you know, like this, and, and they don't even realize that they're on your space, on your private space. When you go to Latin America also, it's not like that, it's not that extreme, but it is, it's a certain proximity and touching and moving and it's very, um, so th there is a certain participation and openness that I think here everybody's a little more private and have more like a personal space and privacy and so they, people are participating but with a certain restrictions, with a certain, like, okay, this is my private space, this is my, my, you know, when I, and this I'm saying, as a daily life, the same as the performances. When I moved here 20 years ago, I was grabbing everybody, as soon as you introduced me to somebody, hi, two kisses, and Americans were like, okay, what are you doing? What are you really doing? And for me, it was totally normal because this is what we do in our daily life. And you get, you go to the university, you get introduced, you kiss, some, you kiss the people, and you go to somebody, and you introduce to somebody, and that is a respectful thing. So for me, it was kind of like, who, who, like why touching? And it was interesting because I have to go through a very strong period of time trying to adjust in the personal space, the personal and the mental space, in order to fit into a society. Hey, but I really have to say that I, uh, I am really, really well surprised because here the people has, um, has uh, come to me to tell about the experience. It doesn't happen too much in Latin America. They, they just uh, participate and just. But here, the people that have been participating uh, and that I met after that, they have sharing with me his or her experience, and that is really nice for me. The other day, I was almost crying. <laughs> okay, it was it was so beautiful. They have. Uh, share with me the pictures and the feelings, and but with emotion. And I say, and they have, they told me, please uh, don't give up. And, and uh, when somebody told me that, okay, I won't. <laughs> and it's it's because it's a huge effort, and I really appreciate that of this opportunity. Well, I think that's the truth because they're really sharing, even if it's not physical. That's a different is the space the private space that they're really sharing feeling and then the communication and the dialogue could be strong. But it's, a, it's, it's about a cultural thing. So in the moment that you have to work and as an artist, as an artist or somebody that works in the art field, in the moment that you really can work with different cultures, in that moment you need to engage and try to understand what each culture is about and really be respectful, fully respectful with where you are and, and what you're actually how do you, you can support those differences, you know? You know. Um, I, to answer your question, I don't know since I, I've only gone to Japan. Um, I don't know how my work would, would translate into another culture, but that's definitely something that I would love to be able to do is take take the diversity walks and talks performance and go to uh, Colombia and interview people there and see how their answers um, differ or are similar or who they are and just get to know them. I think this specific project could could translate very well into every different culture because it's really just getting to know them and what their culture is about. Um, but 
like for the Maid Cafe, if I took that one and put it back into Japan, I think it would be very different uh, because it is a different culture and like you said, there's this kind of respect that you have to bring into that. So um, it would be it would be very interesting to be able to travel and do my performance work. I think if we don't have any more time, I'm sorry if anybody has questions, but I think it, we have to wrap it up here. So thank you so much. Thank you, everybody.